You're listening to Shared in Life Radio. I'm your host, Poppy Fella Pellegrino, and this is Queerator, the show that celebrates LGBTQ plus artists and creators. Today, I'm very excited to be speaking with the wonderful Leith Ross. Leith Ross is a Canadian singer-songwriter, and their first album, Motherwell, was just released. So first of all, congrats on the album. Uh, I really loved it. I think my favorite song was Grown Up. Nice. Seems to be a, a popular one. Um, so I just wanted to talk about the title for a second, Mother Well. I know you talk a lot about family in this album, and I was wondering if they were connected. Yeah. Um, so Mother Well is actually the little place in Scotland where my mother was born. She was telling me that that was the name of it, and I was like a year and a bit ago, and I was like, that's the prettiest name I've ever heard. And then the record ended up being kind of all about family and remembering like being a kid and, and how on earth I ended up to be a large human. <laughs> and like the concept that if my parents had never met, like if my mom's family had never moved from Scotland, I wouldn't exist. And so, so then I was thinking about how pretty that name was and how it was like kind of ties into the whole like theme of the record. And it's so fun because this person who hosts like a little uh, music show in Motherwell in Scotland heard about the record mm. and contacted me. Oh, that's so sweet. So cute. So yeah, it's it's tying back to the actual place, which is awesome. So you recorded this album live off the floor in one afternoon for a college assignment. What was that like? Yeah, it, so the assignment was to have an EP of like about 15 minutes. So that's like three-ish songs. So I had three songs rehearsed. We got two recording sessions and the first one I used to record like the beds of these other three songs that aren't even on the record. And then basically like two weeks before the second session, which was my last session in the studio, we were like playing through my newer songs, like just for fun with a couple of my friends, just acoustically, just at like, I don't know, just to, to play them. And we were like, these sound really good. <laughs> like this is, this is fun. It's going really well. So we messaged the engineer and we're like, maybe this is literally insane, but what would you, how would you feel about like a last minute live off the floor situation? And we'll just bang out as many songs as possible. And he's great. Mm -hmm. His name's Matthew Manifold. He's the best ever. So he replied and was like, heck yeah, let's try it. (laughs) So we did. And it should have felt like a lot of pressure, but it was very like, it was really nice beautiful friendship atmosphere like we were just having fun playing the tunes so we got like maybe two takes of every song and then just picked one Mm -hmm. and somehow ended up being an actual record that (laughs) I released but yeah it was it was very like it sort of came about very nonchalantly I would say and how do you approach writing a song does it just kind of come to you or do you put aside uh, some time in the day it does sort of usually just come to me Sometimes at very weird times, I often write like in the middle of the night, I'll wake up at 3.30 in the morning and be like, oop, gotta get the sweeter. <laughs> but this was all very much based on like, I was going through a really hard time and I needed an outlet. I feel like a lot of these songs came from like, I was feeling so much stuff and I probably should have had a therapist, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote songs <laughs> and it was very much just trying to release all those really insane feelings yeah the albums are actually in like chronological order of when I wrote them so it's like a little story time about like a couple of hard months and I think because you put them in chronological order it really adds a nice emotional arc to the album like I, I really felt like they were connected oh that's good I was hoping that it would feel a little bit like um therapeutic to go through it in order yeah definitely (laughs) um and speaking of that you talk about this analogy of a blue line connecting the singer and the person who's listening were you thinking about that while you were writing the album were you thinking about making someone feel less alone or connected to the music definitely I actually had a moment I think it was when I was writing for now which is definitely the saddest song Mm -hmm. because it's touching on some pretty heavy subjects And I was content warning, like I was feeling like not really like I wanted to be alive. But then in the middle of the song, I was like, okay, but I am going to stick around. So I'm going to like make sure that if this ever gets out into the world, I would, I would want someone to feel I was validating them. And at the same time, expressing my like reason and will to be here and like, 
giving them a little handhold to like get through another little while. Yeah. And in this album too, you talk a lot about family and especially your grandfather. One of my favorite songs is actually Tommy. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about him and the inspiration. Totally. He was the best, most quiet and also insane and just Scottish. <laughs> like he was so like, so, like sweet. <laughs> yeah, just Scottish. I don't even need another <laughs> descriptor. But he was just yeah. like this like big strong man and like always made hilarious jokes and we thought he was we just thought he was the best because he was just funny and he played like six instruments but couldn't read sheet music because he just had that amazing ear where he was like someone would play a song and he could just play along on the mandolin or the fiddle or the guitar or whatever so I just like idolized him as a kid and he was just so easygoing and and you know whatever was happening he was like all right this is happening and and then the music also was so comforting and like something a sound that I knew from childhood so when I was really going through it and looking for comfort I was thinking about him a lot because he was such a good musician and such a good man and the sound of my grandpa like making a joke and playing one of his instruments in the corner of my grandma's living room is like the perfect summary of my childhood so when I was really longing to be small again and be with my family I was always thinking about that sound the sound of him talking and and playing the mandolin or whatever so so that, I saw a lot of comfort in that which is why I ended up writing Tommy and also because I just think he's a, he was a great man I miss him <laughs> yeah so uh, I also wanted to know why you love music why it's the way you choose to express yourself in the best moments of my life music has not taken away from anything it's only ever added it, it maybe like added something it makes me feel like everything is magical and the world is gonna everything's gonna work out and everything's gonna be fine I always like my two favorite things are to listen to music and to be by myself in the outdoors and like my mom once said to me like don't you find that music is a bit distracting you're not getting the full experience when you're listening to it by yourself outdoors because you could just be listening to whatever is happening outside and I was like, no, actually, when I'm listening to a really good song and I'm by myself somewhere, like on a drive or walking in the trees or something, it like levels it up. <laughs> and then I just feel like this magical, insane energy where I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy to be alive. So music has always done that for me in every context. It just heightens everything around me and my whole life and feeling. And then I, and then I just feel like so human and so alive. So that's been the main thing that it's given to me. And also, I mean, obviously also like going through something, you're listening to someone's song and then they, they say something about you, like not actually about you, but they like say something and you're like, why do you know me like that? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, I'm not alone, <laughs> which is also a great feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get that. All right, so I wanted to transition now into the gay questions. Hey yo. So you're a non-binary singer, yeah. and I think the concept of non-conforming gender is very new for a lot of people. So I was wondering if you could just define it. Like, what does it mean to you? Because I know a lot of people, it's different. So non-binary to me, I guess. Sorry, my cat might join us in a moment. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, it means getting everyone else to acknowledge the range of who, who I am because I you know some days I wake up and I'm like I want to put on a dress and go lounge in a field of flowers and then some days I wake up and I put on my binder and my like dress shirt and I'm like I'm a boyfriend I don't have a partner but if I did you know hypothetically yeah. I would be the boyfriend um and at all times all those different parts of me are in the same body and they're all great and I just I love like for example pronouns I love they them pronouns because it's like hearing people acknowledge that in me you know that I have so many different facets of me and sides and especially when it comes to gender and gender expression so yeah for me it's about like being a little bit of everything and the extreme joy and 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 validation in like acknowledging that and having other people acknowledge it and it's different for everyone obviously but yeah yeah 
Is there a certain stereotype about non-binary people that bothers you? Nice. Yes. I don't love the whole like expecting androgyny thing. Oh, yeah. If you're not non-binary, if you dress femme, I'm like, all right, time to shut up. Also, <laughs> people need to get out of their heads that non-binary is always like woman light. There's the non-binary people that are more at risk too are non-binary people that are, you know, um, assigned male at birth and then present more femme. So it's like, we're everywhere. We're everything. <laughs> Gotta acknowledge the range. <laughs> Just Let us wear what we want. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's all a big, beautiful spectrum. Right. And and not everyone fits right in the middle of like androgyny and more mass presenting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so coming out for you, I know you grew up in a smaller Ontario town. What was coming out like for you and that process of self-acceptance and then having to come out to these the people in your life? Um it was tough. <laughs> I in high school, it was a lot of just like like I wasn't out as non-binary, but I was out as bi. And then it was just a lot of like that classic thing where you're at parties and all of a sudden all your like very straight friends who are women want to make out with you and you're like, why? And then they assume that you want to and you're like, why? And it's just like very much that thing. And you're at a party, you're like, I don't want to be here anymore. What is going on? <laughs> um, so it was a lot of that for a lot of years. And then and then I like last year of high school slash first year of college, then it became easier and it was just it was more about like man microaggressions. But <laughs> we live. Um, <laughs> non-binary coming out as non-binary was a lot harder, I would say, just because it is less. Like my parents didn't know anything about it, really. You know. Yeah. So it's a it's a bit harder for some people to wrap their head around, and it, there's a lot more explaining to do, which obviously is takes such an emotional toll. Like it just like saps all the energy out of me when I have to explain it to people Mm -hmm. and like and also to myself I'm like still figuring out what it means to me and everyone's like what do you mean and I'm like I don't know (laughs) I don't have all the answers (laughs) yeah um so it it's it was difficult and obviously it's also like just a continuous thing for the rest of my life I'm going to be coming out because I'll be moving in circles especially in music you know and and someone will misgender me and then I'll have to say oh sorry it's actually this thing um and then they're like oh what what does that mean like, and then it just happens over and over and over again so I'm, I'm like stealing myself to have to do that for the rest of my career mm-hmm. but getting some comfort in that like there are people that that were not un- unapologetic but just you know went out into the world and were like this is who I am respect it I demand respect from you for this thing and then that meant that now I can do this you know, right. paying homage to the, the history of the activists that fought and not even activists, people just that just lived and, and were visible and how awesome that is. Right. So that's another thing. It's like I, I, I owe it to myself and, and to maybe some young non-binary person or queer person who like wants to hear someone be like, uh-uh, respect me. <laughs> so... So I'm going to keep doing it, even though it's exhausting. (laughs) And um, who are some of those artists for you? I know, like, I I listened to Troye Sivan when I was first coming out, and just hearing a man singing about another man was just, it blew my mind, because I was like, oh, this is a thing that people can do. It's normal. So what are some of those artists for you that you listen to, and you're like, oh, this is a thing that I can be? Yeah, true. I don't, honestly, I don't remember the specific songs like the first few songs I listened to but I do remember being on my first computer (laughs) in my basement bedroom and I was on a youth like one of the like old days YouTube just like binges like I was just clicking on stuff (laughs) and then and then there was some like songs that came on I think one of them was Haley Kyoko and I think another one was um oh that new artist I'm not sure how to pronounce their name Claude I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's Claude or, I think it is spelled that way, but they're really cool. They're non-binary and they have, a, they had a song about like being in love with their best friend and I was watching that music video mm-hmm. and I was just like, ah, hello. Oh my, 
my god <laughs> this could be <laughs> You know, and I can write songs about it and make music videos about it. Yeah. What? <laughs> so it was less like a single song or a single artist and more just like finding a, like a whole side of the music industry that was like really cute lesbians and trans people making music. And I was like, oh my gosh, there is a place for me in the world. Yeah. Like I'm going to have to get out by myself, you know? Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> Um, and finally, what are three words you'd use to describe yourself? Before you said uh, bike, elephant, and Gatorade. You can stand by those words or you can make new ones. <laughs> right now, I do not know what it is with me and Gatorade, but I love it. Um, okay. Gatorade definitely has Send one of the words it. then. We're keeping that. <laughs> okay, Gatorade. <laughs> um, super se- sensitive. Sensitive is another one. I'm so sensitive. I cry at everything for no reason at all i think it's because i'm a cancer but that is very gay for me to say no, I, um, you know what i heard that that was a stereotype for gays that they're really into astrology yes yeah it is confirmed and, you can confirm this on the show <laughs> like i have never i'm okay it's not that every gay that i've met is into astrology it's just that they definitely know their sign because enough gay people have asked them about it they're like I gotta know this like even if I'm not into it I have to know what my sign is um anyways so yeah sensitive yeah we have Gatorade sensitive and then what else <laughs> gay gay all right <laughs> You can spell Gatorade like G A Y Gatorade. I like that. I can do that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well done. <laughs> thank you. All right. So thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, for the people listening, their album Motherwell just came out. So go listen to it. It's amazing. It's on all the streaming platforms. And thank you for being here today. This was really fun. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening. For show updates, go follow us on Instagram at queerator underscore podcast. The next episode will feature indie folk duo Moscow Apartment, so I hope to see you then. Stay proud.